Hey everyone, and welcome back to another C Sharp RPG tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be making hovering names for our enemies and NPCs. So if you see in a lot of MMOs, they'll have the name of the creature or the NPC hovering above their head. So we're going to set something up with that. So before we get started, I just want to introduce the new enemy. Yeah, I think he might have some issues, but this is what we have to work with. So. We're just going to go up to game object and we're going to be creating 3D text. Now I should say that you can use um, 2D text as well in the GUI, but for now we're just going to be using 3D text because I find that's the easiest. So what we want to do is we want to center this over our enemy. And we'll lift it up however high we want. We can adjust this later if we want to but we'll just try getting it in the ballpark area. So now that we have that set up, we actually want to go in and change the alignment, or the anchor, I mean, and we want to set it to middle center. Now we're probably going to have to adjust this again. So what that'll do is, um, no matter how long the text is, it'll always create a center point for that text. And that way, when we're adjusting the text to follow the camera, it won't make it uh, go all over the place. Because normally, if it was anchored at one of the corners, it'll flip the text around in a weird way that we don't want. So we want it just to stay at the center, because we're going to be rotating this text at the center. So now, from this point, um, you can see that our text, our 3D text, is kind of blurry. And now we can fix that simply by increasing the font size. So we can just set it to 16, and you want to scale this text down. You see we're kind of getting sharper. You can probably make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That looks a little bit better. And we'll make it bold for now. And you guys can increase this higher if you want to make it sharper, but we're just going to leave it at this for now. So now from this point, um, we'll just create the name this uh, name text. And we will go and attach it to our enemy. And from this point, all we need to do is go into our code and make this text follow the camera. Because right now if we go into game, let's demonstrate this now, we can see it floating how we want it but it's not following and facing towards the camera all the time because you wouldn't want to read it backwards <laughs> unless you really want to, but uh, yeah. So we'll go jump into code and fix that. So now we just want to jump into our enemy stats script and this is the code that's on our enemy. You could also create a separate script for the text itself to just throw onto the text. Either way works fine, but I'm just going to reference it through the enemy stats. So the first thing we want is a public game object. And this is going to be referencing the 3D text. So we'll just call it text name for now. And then we'll jump into our update, create a quick if statement. So we'll just make sure right now that text name is not equal to null. So if we accidentally forget to apply a game object to this, it's not going to cause any errors coming up that um, this piece of code doesn't have anything to reference to. So the first thing we want to do is create the text name dot transform dot look at. And what this is going to do is it's going to face the text towards the camera. So whatever camera we specify, this text will uh, rotate and face towards. So the camera we want to reference is our main camera because this is the main one we're using. And we want to just reference the transform.position of that. And then we just need one more thing. Actually, I'm going to show you guys real quick in game. Actually, before we do that, we probably should have applied it. One second. So now we can jump back in. I'll show you what kind of errors you can run into with this. 
So right now, um, the text is facing backwards, which is what we don't want. So we actually want to flip this text all the way around. So the next piece of code we're going to add, just to fix that, is we're going to change the transform dot rotate. So the rotation, and we're going to flip it. So we're going to change it 180 degrees around so it faces towards the player. So now if we jump back in game, you guys can see that the text is now facing us. So now we can do a couple of different things with this. Um, so if you want to create an enemy or a friendly, usually these pieces of text will be different colors. So if we want to actually assign these different colors within the code art itself, or you can go in here and just change the color automatically. Also, you could just name the, um, the NPC or enemy through here, or we can do it through code. So we'll jump back in here, and we want to reference text name again. And let's see here. We want to actually get the component that's on there. So the component is called text mesh. So if we jump back into Unity. You'll see right here, this is a text mesh. So that's what we're going to be referencing to. And we just want to do, first we want to close that off and then do color. Um, and we want to equal that to whatever color we want. So we, we have a bunch of different colors to choose from. Also, if you had the color code, you can enter that in as well. But for now, we're just going to be doing basic colors that they have built in. So now we see it automatically changes to red when we start it. And so with this, you could also do different stuff like make the, the name flash. So if you set up a timer and you had it flash every, you know, few seconds, so while it's selected or not selected. Also, I guess we can do that as well. We could set it up so um, this enemy, depending on if it's selected or not, um, that text will show up. So all, all you'd have to do is just create a public bool, call it is selected, and then you just want to say if is selected equals true, then we want to display the text. So if you want the monsters in the world not to have a nameplate until you actually select them, you can set it up that way. Also, we could do it by distance by calculating the distance between the text and the player. Um, depending on how you have your game set up, you probably wouldn't want to load enemies that are really far away from the player. So depending on what zone the player enters, you would change which enemies are actually spawned. It, and it also depends if you're making a single player RPG or an MMO, but yeah. So if we actually want to reference our text name and change it through code, we can also just go in here, copy that, and just do dot text, and then we can equal it to whatever name we want. Or what we can actually do is just take the enemy name and get rid of that. Just do plus enemy name. So whatever our enemy name is set up in here, nightmare. You can see that it displays now as nightmare. So pretty much any of those options that are in the text message mesh are customizable so you can change the size and whatever else you want to do uh, yeah so we could set this up for the enemy we can make it green for maybe a friendly NPC or white depending on whatever we want to do um, and then maybe if you have the enemy selected it can change to a different color or do a different effect and that's the different things you can do with the 3d hovering text so until next time see you guys later